Welcome to Fit Body Lifestyle, the show where we dive deep into the world of fitness, health, business, relationships, and the art of living a balanced life. I'm Jamie. And I'm Greg, and we're here to give you the benefit of our experiences in the fitness and bodybuilding industry, the corporate world, running a business, personal development, and building healthy relationships. Whether you're sweating it out in the gym, hustling in your business, or seeking balance in your everyday life, you're in the right place. So lace up those sneakers, grab that water bottle, and let's get ready to transform our minds, our bodies, and our lives. Welcome back to Fit Body Lifestyle. I'm so excited to be here today. We just did an episode on HRT and we needed more time. So Hormone replacement therapy. That's hormone replacement therapy. And we wanted to take a little bit more time and delve a little bit more into testosterone replacement therapy, which we also call TRT. Um, Delve into that a little bit and then also talk about in the bodybuilding world, the use of PEDs, um, which is performance enhancing drugs. And, you know, we're just going to talk a little bit about that and this world and you know what people might want to think about well and, and I you know that thought did occur to me and I just I just had that thought you just catalyzed it which is um, I, I almost the vilification uh, of TRT uh, because of the bodybuilding world in some ways because um, the testosterone has been used uh, throughout the years uh, and and I do think there has been a, a stigma uh, I do think that stigma is diminishing significantly it's much more widely accepted to uh, do hormone replacement therapy therapy and specifically testosterone replacement um, in this industry it's more common um, if you're listening to this and you're outside of that bodybuilding industry you may have some different thoughts about that I, I don't know I mean I, I it's, it's funny because we don't really spend as much time outside of the bodybuilding space to think about it but I will tell you that in the corporate world um, where I had uh, some discussions with people and, and, and as I, I said this, I you know did personal injury defense for a long time. Um, that was just some, not not so, I, I don't know that it was vilified, but it just wasn't talked about very much. You know, I do, and I do, and you know, especially from the standpoint of women, I do think that it's becoming a lot more mainstream when we talk to men. Talk about men. I mean, we see, and I talked a little bit about this on our HRT episode that you know now we have pharmaceutical companies that are actually marketing direct to consumer mm-hmm. and we see those those commercials quite frequently that are talking about low T which is low testosterone and it's really my primarily focused on men um, because that is you know a, a primary hormone for men and when it starts to decline with age there are a lot of symptoms that they experience that are not ideal you know so starting a primary hormone for men but not an absent hormone for women Right. And and that's what I absolutely. And I think it's important to get into that, that, you know, as women, we also will experience symptoms when we have low testosterone levels. Obviously, our testosterone levels are naturally lower than men, which is normal. Um, They shouldn't be at zero. (laughs) So, you know, and so what are those symptoms? So a lot of times for women, it's, you know. Oh, and we should, we forgot to give the disclaimer, by the way. Oh, yes. Because we are not doctors, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, we're really sharing our experience, um, you know, because we do work with a lot of athletes that, that you know, whether they be, you know, younger, older, that, that do experience some of these things. So we're talking from our own personal experiences and, um, you know, with, you know, our many, 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 many opportunities to work with different physicians and things like that and, and you know, helping and, our, our athletes. And I am a, I am a, we're both. I mean, you have HRT and progesterone and I use TRT for testosterone. So uh, I, I have been using testosterone replacement therapy for a number of years uh, to get my levels to a more functional amount for me and more optimized for me. Right. And, and when we're talking about TRT, we're not talking about adding in super physiological doses to get you beyond, above and beyond where the normal range is. That's not what we're talking about when we're talking about TRT. Um, you know, when we talk about performance enhancing, that's a different thing. That's where, you know, people are looking to reach ranges that are outside of the norm and, you know, get super physiological sorts of right. results. So, so, the, so the difference is therapy, therapeutic based to get optimized level versus super physiological rates or amounts or dosages that would take you to a different level of performance. Um, this is not about, I mean, in some ways there is performance enhancement by optimizing your levels certainly and making you feel better, but there's a distinction and a clear line distinction between that and, and, 
taking the amounts necessary to optimize your body so that you feel better, so that your symptoms, whatever they are, whatever those may may be, and there's a, a long long list of those, wh- whether to mi- minimize or manage those symptoms, and really, it's more of a symptomatic approach. Absolutely, and the it's you know low energy, hard time staying asleep, um, lack of strength, lack of recovery, um, sex drive. You know is is a big one. You know for for women and for men. You know and and I think that that's something sometimes we don't talk about as much for women. Right. You know there's a lot of focus put on that for men, and you know men have all these different you know different medications that are you know helping in that area, whereas for women you know sometimes we overlook it, and so you know it's just really interesting to me when I talk to a lot of women that are my age or you know even a little younger a little older that are experiencing some of these things and their primary care has never even talked to them about it or tested Mm -hmm. them or or looked at it so that's why i think it's so important to talk about it um you know and open that line of communication so that people know like there are alternatives you know if you choose um to try something and you know it it can really be a game changer and it it has been for for many of of my athletes And, and this can be this can fall into the category of preventive preventative medicine um, to help you stay more optimized. But I do also think that, you know, there, the reality is that not, uh, I shouldn't say not all, I would say probably most insurance does not cover testosterone replacement therapy, therapy currently. I don't know that wh- whether that's changing or not, but I don't think that it, most of it's not covered. I'm or is it covered? I'm not so sure about okay. that. I do think that in some cases it's covered, in some cases it's not. It just depends on your policy, depends on your physician. You know, I do think. I think that okay, that that's fair, and yeah. I think that's really what I wanted to say was that it, it depends. <laughs> it may or may not be covered by by your by your insurance, and so that's just something to investigate. Yeah, absolutely, and and exploring that. Um, there's also you know DHEA, which is the pr- precursor to testosterone. If those levels are low, sometimes we can address that so that we've got more of that raw material for our body to convert. So there are opportunities to even address you know some low testosterone levels without initially maybe even going to um, testosterone replacement. Um, and that's something, of course, you would want to talk to your healthcare provider about and and look at your specific labs and what makes the most sense for you. Um, but I do think that just bringing it up as an option, and especially if you're noticing any of these types of, you know, symptoms and you have, you suspect maybe it's low, um, you know, at least taking, taking a look at it. So you know what you're dealing with. Well, and I, I, I will say the cautionary tale with this as I was listening to you list the symptoms and, and I was just thinking, okay, if I'm listening to this and, and I'm having those symptoms, I may think, oh my God, those symptoms match me to the T, uh, no pun intended with, with to testosterone. <laughs> But, uh, but those, those things, Good those one. things match match me to a T. And what I would tell you is that, and we had talked a little bit about confirmation bias um, in in part one of this, where we talked about hormone replacement. And I would just caution you about coming to a conclusion that I have low T or I have low testosterone simply because you're having these symptoms. Um, the symptoms and, and you know, one of the things that we talked about before was when those symptoms arose, when the timeline was, the importance of kind of journaling that stuff as to when they start, uh, just so you have that history. But it, it's 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 the recognizing the, the context of those symptoms. So, okay, I'm, I have low sleep. Oh my God, I have low T. Well, do you? Um, or is there something else going on that may be producing the low sleep? Oh, I have low energy, I have low sex drive, I have this, whatever that symptom or multiple symptoms that you have, that symptom complex that you have, just make sure that that prompts a question rather than a conclusion. I love that you brought that up, and and I did mention in our first episode that my, my sleep issues were related to progesterone, not to testosterone. It could be either or, but I had to go in and find out right. what what was the issue. It could also just be stress, like we talked about. I mean, if you're going through a tough time in your life, you know, jumping to the assumption that it's you know low t-, t or low progesterone, low you know, just you know, kind of looking at the whole big picture and what's going on with you. Again, this is where you know getting the blood work. First of all, taking a look at your symptoms. Mm-hmm. I love the journaling. Um, I think it's a really great idea to bring that in with you when you do talk to your physician. Um, that way, you don't forget you know, write all your questions down, write everything that down that's that you've been noticing along with the notes, you know, when are, when are you noticing it? Is there anything that, you know, is associated with it? If there's, if it's associated with stressful events, it might be a stress management issue and, and taking a little bit look, 
you know, deeper deeper dive into that. And and side note for this um, related but unrelated, well related, I think. Um, women, uh, I, I am not uh, a woman, uh, but I will tell you that your cycle is very important and understanding your cycle and where you are in your cycle is something that's really, really important, especially when you run blood work. Um, because depending on where you are in your, in your cycle, that will affect the levels or the acceptable ranges that would be uh, for estrogen and progesterone in particular. So getting in tune with your cycle is something that I would I would seriously advocate for you if you're not already doing it. And there's some great apps. I think Flow is one of the more popular apps out there for, for tracking that cycle. Um, I, and I don't know, Jamie, you're the only woman in this room. So you tell, you tell <laughs> I me. I was enjoying <laughs> listening to you talk about it. <laughs> well, I will advocate on behalf of women uh, because I do think, and, and men, I would just tell you that um, a woman's cycle, I think, a lot of men look at that uh, as something that's a bad thing <laughs> because sometimes um, PMS can be can can manifest in certain ways. Um, but as a male, I think you need to really encourage the women that are around you to understand their cycle and to track that cycle so that they have a good understanding of their body. It's just learning your body. Um, it's something that I, as a man, don't have to worry about. Um, but as but I do have to worry about lower testosterone levels as I get older. Um, and you know. One of our coaches talks about 10% over 10 years, uh, it, 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 that diminishing thing. I would give you the other metaphor of it. it's like boiling the frog in reverse. Um, and I, I think Mythbusters busted the myth on boiling a frog, but the metaphor is still appropriate, which is, look, if I'm slowly turning up the heat or slowly turning down the heat, I may not notice those little changes. That's one of the reasons why I really advocate for the journaling with this is because I am going to be a poor historian. And a year ago, if my testosterone was 10% lower than it is this year, I may not feel, experience, recognize the symptoms of that 10%. But in five years, if it's down 50%, well, I probably will, will notice that. And that's why it's just important to understand your body. So where we started with this was just advocacy for women. Understand your cycle. Track your cycle. Know where you are in your cycle. And it's just something that's important as part of you. It absolutely is. And one of the things that's going to be important when you get your blood work done is it is important, depending on what you're testing, that you know where you are in your cycle. Um, ideally, you know, if you're doing a full blood panel, you're looking at all the hormones as a female, we want to be taking that blood panel it, depending on how your cycle runs around day 21 and, and more ideally if you can back it about seven days prior to when your cycle would start that's usually going to be the best time but again that's something you want to check with your healthcare provider so that you know why day 21 because it's it's where you are in terms of where all the hormones are okay. fluctuating so it, it gives a better picture and a more accurate picture of of where you are overall in the cycle so but again like i said it's going to depend on what they're looking for they may want you to do it at a different time it's just check check, yep. check before yeah. you do it you know with your healthcare provider and they'll know whether or not that makes the most sense but in most cases, we want to we want to be able to replicate the timing also from one blood panel to the next. So if you know one time we're doing it, you know right after our menstrual cycle, and the next time we're doing it right before, or the next time, you know it's going to be all over the place. It's just a harder to compare apples to apples. So that's the other thing is is looking for that consistency in terms of when you're doing kind of like weighing ourselves. We want to weigh ourselves at the same time every day and right. with it's the same amount of water. Right. It's a baseline, yeah. exactly. Um, and and I I'm going to ask you a question that is somewhat related to TRT, but since we're on this topic of, of your of your cycle, um, what about birth control overlay on that? How important is that? I know that's a big topic. Is, mm. is, that, a, is that a deeper topic that's for another time? That's a whole <laughs> other topic. Okay. Um, that, yeah. But yes. just understand that part. Right. And, and just, there's so just for many today, different types right. of birth control. Right. There's, I mean, we could just, we could go down a whole rabbit hole with that one. Uh, again, you know, we talked, we've talked about this in the last episode about HRT and, you know, I'll reiterate it here. You need to make sure that every uh, healthcare provider that you're working with knows everything that you're taking. Yes. So otherwise, they're not going to be able to deduce the proper information from you know your blood work or the symptoms you're telling them about. And you know, birth control is, would be on the top of that list. They need to know if you're if you're you know what you're taking, how frequently you're taking it, if you're missing it, you know, all of those things. You you, you reminded me of 
back in the military when we would have a shot record and we would have a, our, our, our medical packet or medical jacket that we would bring in uh, to certain units to get, you know, here's my medical history. Here's everything that I got going on. And it, it's just really, I, I think with digitized medical records and the, and the move that our society has been making towards that that's going to help a lot um but it doesn't excuse you from your responsibility um to yourself not your responsibility to the healthcare profession you don't owe a responsibility there but you owe a responsibility to yourself to have as much of that information as you can and um you know having i think i've had 18 20 orthopedic procedures in my life and um one of the things that's always hard for me to do when i go into a doctor is to is to remember those dates um and again that's something that I started to keep records of myself so that I could accurately convey when I went when I had a procedure done, um, which is no different than the advice relative to understanding your cycle, understanding when things are appearing in your body, understanding when you are experiencing behavioral, feeling, emotional changes um, that are physical changes that are going to impact on your blood work or your blood work is going to overlay on those. Right. And, and I love that you said that because you cannot depend on that system because right. as you and I talked about in, in that last episode, there could be something that you're taking that's over the the counter that's mm -hmm. you know dietary supplement that's actually causing issues as well so if your healthcare provider doesn't know that and i you know I, we had a situation recently where we had an athlete that was on thyroid medication but that was taking calcium you know which then blocks the the you know the body's ability to use the thyroid medication if it's within a you know within a certain period of time after taking the medication so again but, the, but their healthcare provider didn't know they were doing this right. and and really it was us digging well and, and asking more questions well, one other thing their healthcare provider. Let, let, let me expand that that aperture a little bit. The healthcare provider didn't know they were taking that. But the other part is, is that and and I can't say because I wasn't there. I was not in the room. I don't know what the what the physician or the pharmacist told uh, this athlete. But at least in her mind, nobody had told her not to take the calcium within within a certain time period after taking the thyroid medication so she didn't know and and again this is one of those things where and I, you know I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna gosh I'm gonna throw myself under the bus I guess and drop a dime on myself is that when I when I go get a prescription um, every time uh, at CVS they they say would you like to talk to the visit to the pharmacist about about you know taking this and I'm usually no uh, because normally is stuff that I've taken before or stuff that I assume. And, and as I think about this, um, gosh, I'm just going to go ahead and commit to this myself. Is it the next time I pick up a prescription, I'm going to ask my, I'm going to ask the pharmacist, Hey, cause maybe there's something that I don't know, or maybe there's something that I'm assuming, or maybe there's something that just because it says it on the label, um, that I should be aware of. So I, I think just for patient advocacy, which is really kind of a, a focus point for us, I'm going to ask. I think that's great. I also think it's great to do just do some research. Right. I mean, we have a lot of tools at our disposal so that if we do get put on a medication, to me, the first thing I'm going to do is go and read about it. You know, what are the contraindications? What are the potential side effects or symptoms? Um, you know, what should I be expecting? Like, even if I've been told, I'm still going to go in and read more about it because I want to understand. I'm right. putting something in my body. I want to understand. And that that includes whether it's over the counter and it's a supplement, um, you know, that that you know, I've, I've read about or seen. So I'm going to dig a little deeper before I put in my body. So I know if there's something going on that, that shouldn't be going on. Um, so again, I mean, I know we've talked about this a lot. We have to take personal responsibility um, and not just, I, I, I've seen people or I've had people come to me and give me a laundry list of the things they're taking. And I, I'll ask why are you taking this? Because something might not make sense to me. And they're like, I don't know. I just was told to take it by my coach <laughs> or by another, you know yeah. what I mean? And that like, you know, it might not even have been from a medical professional. It would just could be, you know, somebody, the big guy at the gym told me that I should take this. And <laughs> it, that's scary. That, that's a, and that's a pretty common story, honestly, that we get. It is. I, and you know, I kind of, you know, jumping onto the, you know, the PED port, you know, portion of talking about this. I mean, I'll give an example. And I, I had an athlete that I was working with, things were going really, really, really well. Um, I, we had discussed, you know, what supplements they were taking. Um, we were reversing, body was responding, and all of a sudden, the body took a turn. And things were not responding in the same way. And there was just some things that just didn't add up. And, and you know, me understanding the effect of different, you know, PEDs and, and um, that kind of thing, I, I just got on the call with her and said, hey, is there anything you're taking that I don't know about? Did you add anything in? 
And, you know, she just didn't even think anything of it. Oh, yeah, there's a guy at the gym and he's a bodybuilder and he's really successful. And he told me I should be taking Anavar. So he gave me this bottle of Anavar to start taking and he has me taking 50 milligrams a day. That's a lot. It's a lot. Like that is a lot. Um, for, well, that's a lot of stuff that you're taking from somebody who's not a pharmacist and somebody who's not a medical doctor. Correct. I mean, so even let's say it was what it was supposed to be, right. which we don't know because it was black market. Somebody handed her a bottle. Um, you know, so let's say it was what it was supposed to be. 50 milligrams is still much more than, you know, is a good idea for, for a female, um, especially starting out, never having taken anything before. Um, so number one, number two, um, this is one of the compounds that is the most faked. Um, so a lot of times, and we've run into this with people in the past, um, where, you know, they'll tell us, oh, I'm taking this. And, you know, and my first question is, where'd you get it? <laughs> it's, it wasn't prescribed to you. It wasn't from a pharmacy or you, you know, where are you getting it? And I, you know, I'll say, you know, before you take another, take it for another day, I want you to order a test kit and see what it actually is. And on multiple occasions, it's come back as, you know, D-ball, Dianabol, um, which is something that's, you know, much more- Completely different effect. Correct, yeah. uh, much higher side effects, um, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, and so, I, you know, some of these side effects, the, the virilization, so those are for women, Realization side effects are those those masculine you know types of side effects that might be facial hair, it could be acne, it could be um, body odor, it could be deepening of the voice, it could be um, changes and water to, retention. There, there's a number, yeah, right. Changes to their their nether re the right. nether regions, <laughs> those kinds of things. Um, you know, the so female sex organ modification yeah, through I, through medication. Well, and these things could be permanent. Yeah. So you know, to me, it it, it makes me very nervous when people are you know and and. I know sometimes it's because they trust, maybe they know it's a friend or whatever, and that person may not have intended at all f to, to, to right. get or to sell this, you know, this, what it wasn't supposed to be. And they thought like, they were helping. Right, you know, so that is the thing that I, I just wanted to really caution people with um, because I, I do see it more often than not. And it, it really makes me nervous because you know, even, you know, affecting your ability to have children or, you know, all of these things mm -hmm. can, can come under this category. And, you know, I want, um, well, before, before you go too much further down this road, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm, and I, I'm, I'm not going to cut you off. You can go further if you want, but uh, I do think we want to cover, uh, performance enhancing drugs in a separate, uh, in a separate, uh, episode. Um, I want us to stay a little focused on TRT or do you want to go into a little bit more of the PD? Yeah, I just wanted to touch okay. on it a little bit just because I feel like, you know, there is, you know, some crossover, at least in some people's minds. Yeah. Um, and and uh, just that understanding of, and I know we touched on this on the other episode, but just the difference in TRT for the purposes of replacement and optimizing hormones within a normal range versus bringing on board, you know, some of these drugs that are, you know, people in a lot of cases are taking for you know, like we talked about those those enhancements even above and beyond and especially in the bodybuilding world. Right. And I, I think um, as we talk about that within normal range is also we want to couple that with symptoms. What are your, are, you know, what what are your symptoms? Are you having symptoms? What if you have low T and no symptoms associated with that? What's your thoughts on that? You do not have to add in TRT, if you're not having symptoms right. and, you know, there's nothing that your physician is concerned about, I mean, that's, that's not, it, you don't need to do it just because of a number right. on and, blood and, work. And we, we are not advocating TRT as the, as the, as a panacea, as a fix all, you know, fix all drug or, or fix all uh, supplement or hormone. Um, it is something that we're, we're recommending that you pay attention to your body and you explore that option. If in fact your symptoms and your lab results are, are such that, that you might be a candidate for that, that that's really, I mean, isn't that the end of the day, what we're saying? That's absolutely okay. what yeah. we're saying. And, you know, I, I feel like giving women a per permission to, ex yes. and, and that's kind of where I'm coming from is, um, you know, permission to explore <laughs> that a little bit, because a lot of times, you know, I think we, you know, especially as we're getting older, we just assume that we have to live with certain um, symptoms or certain, you know, and there are changes, right? Changes yeah. that are a normal part of aging, you know, and um, and and some people that is their philosophy. Like I'm, you know, I'm gonna grit, grit and bear it and yep. deal with it. And everybody gets that choice, you right. know. I think just having people understand that there are 
options and opportunities. And again, you know, I know I've, I've talked about before, a lot of times people have low testosterone and they have some of the the symptoms we've been talking about. And immediately what, what the doctor wants to do is, is put them on an antidepressant mm -hmm. or anti-anxiety, anti sleeping medications, things like that. And again, there's a time and place. And if it could be as simple as just getting your normal hormones into a, a, a level, a range that, that feels, you know, comfortable for you and makes you feel more normal again and makes you feel more optimal again you know to me i prefer that option over you know the band-aid approach right and as we as we i think we talked in our other episode that a couple of the takeaways were be aware of of what's going on in your body and ask questions be curious and so you know i can imagine the the, the conversation that somebody somebody might have and you know i think if there's uh, i'll let me jump to the end of this which I, I think if there's a big takeaway from this particular episode what i would like it to be is that as a woman you know that testosterone and testosterone replacement therapy is not for men only. <laughs> um, the testosterone is not a male only hormone. It is a hormone that women have as well. And, you know, I think as we talk about that and we've talked in other episodes and, and just in life, look, you're inundated when you turn on the TV, you're inundated when you, when you, put up Instagram, you're inundated when you put Facebook on, you're in, in, inundated with information, uh, news and everything else. And most of the advertising that at least that I have seen around testosterone boosters, quote unquote, um, have really focused on that male population. And so it's very easy to see why that is a male oriented focus. It's a male marketing focus. Um, and so if you have one takeaway from this, and I'm just thinking about, you know, if I'm a guy listening to this and I'm thinking, hey man, I have all those symptoms. I have low T. I want to go get some testosterone. Testosterone, um, where some women might not necessarily think that, um, and just because of the gender association with the marketing and the advertising that, that that goes on with that. So, if there's a takeaway for today, it's really to you know, in the scenario that you were describing, where somebody goes in and the doctor wants to prescribe an antidepressant or something, to maybe ask that question of, do you think it could be low testosterone, or do you think my hormones may be out of balance? Can we test for that? Ask that question. Well, and on, right? the, and on the flip side, there is too much of a good thing, which is why True. I did want to cross over a little bit into this, you know, the other side of things, because I do think sometimes, again, and I know we've talked about some people think if a little is good, a lot must be really good. Right. Um, you know, on the other side of that, you know, e you know, even with TRT, you know, as a woman, we don't want to start experiencing those virilization and masculinizing sort of side effects. So, you know, we also want to make sure that what we're doing, you know, is is keeping us in a, in a good healthy range that we're not getting side effects um i did want to talk a little bit about the different options when it comes to trt um in terms of you know how your you know how the dosages are, are working or you know how you're applying it um you know because there are options for topical um there's injectable um there is pellets um so there are a number of different how do the pellets work so the pellets are actually inserted and they are inserted where <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to ask you. I, I know these answers, but I also think if I'm listening to this and I'm hearing pellets, where are the, where are the so pellets? So where are they inserted? Like? <laughs> Tell me, where are they inserted? <laughs> this sounds really bad. It does. Uh, well, I was going to say in the butt. but They're not. So just, that, those were where the injections occur. <laughs> I know, and, but that's just our running joke. Or can occur, I should say. Yeah, you're right. That is a running joke with Jamie and me. So it, most of the answers are, where's my phone? It's it's in your butt. Where, where's, uh, where's the keys to my car? It's in your butt. So well, my butt apparently houses everything well, that's ever been missed. So if you're missing laundry socks, they're probably in my butt. Well, and that's because you're asking me things that you know I don't know where they are. And so that's just my smart ass answer. So that's there you true. go. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but I, I just, you know, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the pros and cons um, of the different, you know, ways of using um, TRT and, and that way, you know, when you go in and, and do we do we do we get to the word pellets? Uh, go ahead. Explain. Well, you, you you explain it. This is your this is your domain. There is well they're 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 inserted beneath the skin. Well, yes. Okay. I just I, I mean I just want people to understand that it's not something that you take or it's not something that is like a pill. It's, oh, gotcha. It, I get okay. where you're going yeah. with it. Okay. I was a little confused it's, by it's, your question. It's like it's. I, I mean, I I don't know why IUD came to mind, but it's not like an IUD. It's not inserted in inside your your sex organ. It's but uh, it's it's inserted under the skin. 
Okay. Okay. That's okay. all. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Sorry. Okay. That's all I wanted to. That's all I really wanted. His to get. leading questions sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Don't, don't take me yeah. where I need to go. Okay. Cool. Um, so I, I, you know, I mean, definitely the easiest to apply, I would say, would be the topicals, which is a cream that you would put on the skin. Um, and you know, the downside of that is how much we don't know how much is necessarily absorbed. Um, you also have to be careful if you're going to be touching someone else. Um, I mean, I know that we've had a, a couple of situations where people were using topical and then holding their baby, um, for example. We don't want to be transferring that testosterone to our to our babies or children or or spouses, you know, necessarily. Um, so that that would be a downside and again the absorption is a downside but it certainly is the easiest from an application standpoint um, I have heard some people and I've used the topical with I haven't had any issues with it um, and uh, I just would rotate where I was applying it um, and then just be careful with you know letting it absorb before touching you with it um, but I, I have had some people report that they had hair growth um, in that area where they were applying the the cream, which they didn't like. So, I mean, those are kind of some pros and cons on that side of things. Anything you want to add there? Nope. I think uh, I, I was just thinking about the proge progesterone you put on at night and we have to, it, we'll, we'll cuddle at night and, and you put it on and don't touch that leg. Don't touch this part. I can't <laughs> touch this. And, and, and that, that, I mean, you know, I, I guess the, the old MC hair can't touch this, that, that song came da, to my da, mind. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> Uh, the the injectables I like, um, you know, it's you can control the dosage, how much you're actually, you know, utilizing. Um, but I know for some people that's daunting. And there are two ways to inject. One is intramuscular, which is a lot bigger needle, and the other way is subcutaneous, which is the smaller needle. But and they, there's advantages and disadvantages to both in terms of uh, in terms of when it's available to your body and what the half life is. And and by half life, we just simply mean if you inject 50 milligrams, um, and uh, when is that halved to 25? So when does the dosage start to diminish? And there, there, this gets into a very complex discussion about timing and dosages and everything, which we don't want to do. This is really more right. just are, about talking about. Right. Yeah, to help just, you know the questions right. to ask of your doctor right. when you're making these decisions. Right. Um, but the nice things, the nice thing with the injectable, again, is that you can time time them so that you're keeping a more steady um, level in yourself the entire time. And the other nice thing about it is that you can, if, if it's too much, you can back it down. Mm -hmm. If it's too little, you can increase it. Again, talking to your doctor about this, but you're not stuck with that dosage over a long period of time because because of the half-life, right. you know, it's gonna be used up within, you know, enough, you know, a short enough period of time that the, at that point, if the dosage needs to be adjusted. And again, with the creams as well, it's the nice thing is you can literally adjust it you know, in, in, in an evening. Hey, a half if you a click to. goes to a goes to a full click, and uh, on the I mean, it's like pepper. <laughs> there, yeah. There's a, just a click on the on the dial. Um, and I would say something about this because you've seen me go and and. I am working with my doctor consistently on on man managing my levels and making sure, and I'm getting regular lab work to make sure that my levels are where they need to be. And you know, one of the things that in me personally, uh, with with my testosterone replacement, is that my estrogen tends to shoot up uh, with, with it. And so that, and again, that maybe is another discussion that we can have about the interrelationship of of testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen because they work together. They, they you don't you don't you can't. It's like the big three. They they're not going to work independently of each other they're going to affect one another um and uh for me it, it affects me in raising my estrogen level so i take an estrogen inhibitor uh to make make sure i manage that but i get that done through my lab work and i think the most important road that i want i didn't necessarily want to go down that road but i will but since i'm down it i will just say that i can have a tendency to sometimes forget um my my to take my 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 dose. Um, and that's not a good thing either because part of the way to get consistent in your hormone modulation is to be consistent. Um, so if you're going, Oh, you know, I forgot my injection. If I'm, if it's twice a week injection and I forget every other week, um, that second injection that will affect my hormone optimization. So, um, and when I get labs, if I'm talking to my doctor and the first question he always asks me is, have you been consistent? On your on your dosages, and if I haven't been, then it provides some context to whatever reading I'm getting, which rolls us right into the third option we were going to talk about, which is the pellets. Right. Which is what you're talking about is the benefit of the pellets because they last for three months. So you're going to go into the doctor's office; they're going to insert this pellet pellet 
under the skin um and uh, and then and then that's going to last you for that period of time and then you would go back in and have a new pellet put in right. the nice thing about that and i think for people that are looking for a lifestyle option um so that they can just feel good and not have to worry about it it's a great option um when you, when we're dealing with people who are more on the razor's edge that are like competitors um and they're needing to do hrt then that might not be the best option just because first of all whatever dose that's put in when you put in that pellet, now that's what you're going to be right. dealing with for months. There's no modulation of it. You're going to get your whatever that is. You're going to get that for the period, for the life expectancy of that pellet. Correct. And by the end of the time with the pellet, the the amount that's that's circulating in your body is going to be decreased. Right. So you're not keeping the levels quite as consistent as you would if you were doing the regular <laughs> injection. So those are kind of the pros and cons. And I there's a there's a time and place for each one. There's you know, there's not one that's the be all end all. I think it really depends on what your goals are, um, what you're comfortable with doing and um, you know, what's gonna make you feel the best. So I think, you know, asking the questions, seeing what your doctors recommend and then exploring that a little bit further is a good idea. So as we wrap this up today, um, I think our ta our big takeaways are number one, recognize that uh, testosterone is not a male only hormone. Uh, so women, so just make sure you understand that uh, that can be a factor or play a role or be the cause of symptoms that you may be experiencing. So talk to your healthcare provider and simply ask that question: um, Is testosterone is it is my testosterone low? Can we run labs for that? Understanding that, understand your body, understand how all these things kind of interrelate with each other and look for just as, as I think we talked about in the last one, be skeptical and ask the questions. And I want to add one more thing. When you're running labs, get a copy of them. Right. Uh, frequently, the doctors will just say, oh, everything looked good. And then I'll have somebody come to me and they, oh, my doctor said everything looked good. Well, can I see that? Because sometimes you might be, they're going to say it's good if you're in range, but you might be at the bare bones bottom of the range and you're having every symptom of low T, but they're like, oh, but you're in range, you're fine. Um, so again, get a copy of your labs, understand how to read them, you know, find a uh, you know, healthcare provider that's going to advocate for your well-being, not just to deal with you know an actual problem once it's occurred, let's let's nip it in the bud. So I just wanted to add that one thing, and that's a that's a great add, and something that I think we're seeing is that labs are that with the, again digitization of 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 medical records the accessibility of your of your blood work is much more available to you today than it ever has been and for you know for me personally i go and i look at my historical labs and some lab companies will give you th will give you a year or seven you know if you've had seven blood tests done and over the course of 5 years or 4 years they will give you that historical uh, data and that data really can be a game changer in understanding your body and how it operates uh, to see where levels are diminishing over time to see level where levels where that are increasing over time. So having that awareness can really help you with your understanding and being able to ask that question. I think Jamie advocated for this: the why? Why am I taking this? And why is this happening? Um, and just understanding yourself. So as we sign off for today, you guys know the big three: be good to yourself, be good to each other, and be safe. Thank you for tuning in to Fit Body Lifestyle. We hope today's episode has left you feeling motivated and equipped to tackle your fitness goals, business challenges, and the daily dance of life. Remember to value progress over perfection. Life's tough enough alone. Find the chosen family around you to help you along the way. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite streaming platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fit Body Fusion.